Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today is going to be a flashback episode. So we're actually going to go back two years into the development of this property when I built the very first garden beds that I grew vegetables in. So I want to show you guys the process of that. And it was actually right here. And what I built was, was called a keyhole garden bed. So there's only one pathway. And you'll get to see how I built that using the lasagna method, which is just a fantastic way to build new garden beds uh, much cheaper while infusing a ton of organic matter into your beds so that they're insanely healthy and can house all the microbes and fungi that you want. So I've got a, I've got another video about lasagna beds as well. It's a just a wonderful technique and I'd recommend it to anybody starting their own garden. If you're not gonna do a traditional raised bed with wood, this is a way of having a raised bed while also keeping it cheaper. So now you'll also notice this wall here, and this is a southern facing wall, so it receives a lot of heat. So you'll see in the beginning of the video, I took out a bunch of shrubs that were here that were putting shade onto the house. So now the house gets a little bit warmer in winter and it's a perfect place for my seedlings. So another excellent thing about a southern facing wall, you can put up a trellis here and it's gonna be way warmer. And I actually, I grew a tomato here for over one year at this spot. And it actually, it grew from about here and went all the way across and even started wrapping around the building after a year's worth of time. And the only, the main reason I was able to do that is because we don't really get hard frost here in Lemon Grove and the heat against this wall, especially because it's brick, so it holds heat longer into the night. Another thing to consider with southern facing walls, they are great trellis points and places that have um, warmer microclimates. So now you might be asking, why is this black tarp on the ground? And that's because I'm going to be building a bootstrap farmer 10 by 20 foot greenhouse. And I'm gonna be using this greenhouse for growing a lot of microgreens. I'll be doing my spring starts in there. And I'm even gonna experiment with using grow bags as well. And Bootstrap Farmer gave me this idea. Nick Burton, shout out to you, buddy. They are the ones that make the famous, super strong 10 by 20 trays. Ugh, I can't even lift this up because it's so heavy because of the water. We got rain last night, so these soil blocks are like completely soaked. Check it out, it's on the edge. Barely any deformation. And these trays are about two years old now, so I cannot say enough good things about their propagation and microgreen trays and anything they produce really, they're just all about quality. So this spot has changed many, many times over the course of the last two years. And I just wanna emphasize the fact that you know, constantly think about your setup on your farm. How can I make it more profitable? How can I increase my yields in the same space that I already have? So this is something I've had to look at doing because I didn't get as much land as I wanted to. So I need another stream of revenue that is gonna really push the farm up to the next level. I'm excited to add in this, these new couple crops and ideas and play around with some other revenue streams that are really important to market gardeners. So I'm excited to show you guys that whole process, how I build the greenhouse, and how I'm gonna be using the greenhouse as a new system here for starting plants and creating a lot more revenue for the farm. So a lot of this footage is about two years old, so bear with me. It is really cool to see how much uh, I've improved making my videos. In this one, I'm gonna show you all about how I built these beds, and then I'm gonna do another video about how I planted it. These videos are really more about helping gardeners, just home gardeners, and I built this little garden here for my personal growing. So I grew garlic and broccoli and you know these Korean radishes, and a lot of different special things that I'm not growing commercially, just things that I wanted to experiment with and, and feed my family with. So that's what I use these beds for. That's kind of the intended purpose of showing you guys this, to show you another way that you could garden. And two years ago, I didn't have a direct cedar. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how I planted everything just by hand. So look for that in the next episode.
All right, it's time to start on the first garden bed. I'm gonna be using the lasagna method for this. Layering straw, cardboard, some of my finished compost that I bought, which is chicken and rabbit manure. Um, and then I'm gonna be adding in my uh, couple compost piles. One of them's finished, the other is, you know, three-fourths of the way finished. So now I'm going to use my soaker and just kind of wet down this straw, get it the uh, decomposition process started. Then I'll cover it with some cardboard, wet down the cardboard, cover it with straw, wet the straw down. We really want to get this lower carbon layer extremely wet. And that layer of cardboard um, is going to provide organic matter and that cardboard is going to snuff out any weed seeds that sprout underneath it and on this piece of property right here i actually have grass dead grass that was underneath some of it is going to re-sprout that cardboard and, and straw on top is going to help eliminate those from sprouting and starting again so cardboard straw then i'm going to add my green layer so this is where you would add your compost kitchen waste manure grass clippings fresh leaves you want to thoroughly soak each layer of the lasagna bed before you add the next layer. So start with your brown carbon layer first, soak it, um, add the green layer, cover that with a little bit of straw, soak it again. Add cardboard, a little bit of straw, soak it again. Then add your final layer of soil. Now you could do multiple layers, I just don't have enough material to be able to do that. So I'm only going to do two uh, complete layers. So now, you can see, the bed is starting to take shape. And now I'm not building a traditional bed. It's going to be a keyhole bed, just to maximize the square footage in this area. So where you see the straw there, that's going to be my pathway. And that will be my entrance. And I'm going to have uh, two four-foot beds. And then, you know, you could have an opening here. I'm going to save, you know, what is it, four square feet. So that's four square feet extra of growing area, why not? Let's add the straw next. Little layer of straw on top of this. And then we're gonna cover it with a layer of cardboard. So the pitchfork offers the best tool and technique for ripping apart straw. Um, I've divided it into separate bales. If you just sh shove it in, twist and shake, It works pretty well. And then I'm going to add worm castings and soil. So I've been saving my worm castings that I made from my worm composting system. I've been saving it all this time. So I had to throw it in there. I'm going to throw in some of my worms that are working away as well and they're going to help decompose all of this and then there's one more thing i'm going to add i'm going to be adding azomite which is rock dust which is really really high quality um, minerals it's like about 70 trace minerals um, so it's an awesome awesome product i'm going to be adding it in on this lower layer um, so that it soaks through to the bottom to my actual soil I add on top i'm going to mix in the azomite um, so all my soils um, very high in minerals I'm going to make some warm tea. Um, I've, I watered in my uh, worms the other day, so I'll have a bunch of tea. And I've already put some into my bucket. And it's gonna be about 10% tea to 90% water. So I'm gonna let that fill up. Then I'll be just be pouring it over uh, my garden beds here before I add my layer of garden soil. Just gonna get all of this, these bottom lit two layers just penetrated with bacteria and just wonderful things that are going to increase the health of my soil. Now it's time to add some 
a uh, little bit of worm castings. It's some really good, good stuff. It smells great. So I'm gonna spread a little bit of this out, just a tiny, tiny bit. I'm just trying to add a little bit of nutrients, more bacteria. So I've got my bucket of castings. Just gonna spread this out evenly. Alright, it's a really nice first layer here. Uh, I'm gonna throw down some moisture, of course, right? I'm gonna do one more round, uh, and then I'm gonna add the rest of my worm castings, and then do a final layer of soil on top of that. That'll give me around six inches of depth, um, and then I'll cover it with some straw, and I'm gonna water it throughout the week. And if the beds are gonna settle, they're gonna lower even more, and before I plant, I'll probably add in one more uh, for a final layer before I actually plant in this. So this is azomite. Um, it's a proprietary uh, rock dust. Uh, this is the micronized formula. Um, and the micronized is like a very, very, very fine power powder. Uh, super absorbable. They also sell it in granulated and like like kind of chunky form as well And that's sort of like long-term release. They sell this micronized version on Amazon So it's super easy to get and it's a decent price. It's $45 and if you have Amazon Prime free shipping So this is gonna add a bunch of trace minerals micronutrients for my plants. I've added two layers of soil uh, finishing soil and I'm gonna add it now so that um It'll start penetrating down into the, the lower layers. And then I'm gonna, for my final layer of soil, I'm gonna mix about a cup uh, into each wheelbarrow full. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna let the water uh, dissolve that, let it soak through into all my layers. Um, it's, gonna, it's gonna be feeding the soil life. Um, eventually, uh, my plants will be able to drink from it as well. And these layers of straw and mulch and soil, compost, worm castings, uh, all these things are going to help to absorb that nutrient so I don't lose it down too deep. All right, while the, while the water's going, I'm just going to get my castings out of here. So as you can see, this took about three months for my worms to do. So this is just from like eggshells and kitchen scraps, um, mulch, a little bit of compost that I added. And then they just a little bit of moisture, and then they turn it into the best compost you could possibly make. And they, you know, it's, and it's free. Getting a worm bin going is probably like one of the first things I'd recommend doing when you're starting a garden. Get this system going because I add tea constantly to my to my plants and garden. Um, I want to build a few more of these um, so I can just have constant castings and worm tea all the time. Super, super beneficial. All right, it's time to spread my worm castings. And then I'm gonna rake in all the soil, water it in one more time, and then add a layer of straw to hold in the moisture. All right, that's the final layer. I'm gonna now water it for another 20 minutes um, and then just spread out my straw just uh, to hold the moisture in. Um, and I'm gonna let this thing settle. The bed looks pretty high right now um, for a first year bed, but as I wet these layers and over the next week, it's really gonna compress down. It's gonna start decomposing and it's gonna shrink up. So I'll see how it looks in a, in a week um, and then should be able to start planting. <laughs> 